Hi guys, good afternoon. This is teacher Maria Milagros. I hope you're doing well. In this video, you will find the recording of the class that we taught this Friday regarding, let me go to the next slide, prices. So today is October the 28th, 2021, and the topic of our lesson is going to be this one prices, which is related to what we saw last class regarding money, if you remember. So we're going to review very shortly. I'm sorry, there's no star here, but there should be. So please copy this slide in your notebook. Last class, we discussed the three basic functions of money, which are money as a medium of exchange, when people trade it, for a product. Number two, money as a unit of accounting when people use it to compare the value of products. And then we have number three, money used as a store of value when people save money for future spending. So each time you go to a, let me turn on my pointer for a second. Each time you go to a store or any, place where you can also pay for a service and they give you the good or the service in exchange for money, it's this function right here. Money used as a medium of exchange. Then when you use it to compare the prices or the value of products, like when you go with your mom to the supermarket and she tells you, go to the cheese section and find me the cheapest cheese there is. I don't know. So what do you do? You need to compare the value of the different cheeses that are offered there in order to find out which one is cheaper. And what you're actually doing is, co is compare the value of how much that product is worth per kilogram. So when you're using it to compare the value, to compare prices, you're using it as a unit of accounting. And then you also have money as a store of value. Every time you decide to save your money instead of spending it, instead of using it as a medium of exchange, for example, then you are storing value for future spending. So our first check your understanding question is this one, which methods of exchanging goods and services came first? We had money, we had bartering, and the correct answer for this one is bartering because of what we saw last class. Money evolved later after people realized the limitations of a bartering system. Then we have this situation right here. You plan on buying a new smartphone when you have enough money. How is money being used in this case? It's a medium of exchange as a unit of accounting, as a store of value. This one was very easy. I think we answered quickly in class. And is a store of value. Why? Because you're planning on buying a new smartphone when you have enough money. That means that you're saving money in order to eventually be able to afford the phone. Therefore, you're not buying it yet. You are storing value, storing money to get it later. Then we have another question. You go to a clothing store and you compare the prices for a pair of jeans. How is money being used in this case? Well, as a unit of accounting, of course, because the key verb in this case is this one. You're comparing prices. So answer is going to be number two. And then we have this one, which is a bit more complicated. It says each day you have $5 to spend on lunch. One day you decide you're going to buy a hot dog for $2.50. So later in the week, you can buy a salad for $7. How is money being used in this case? So this was tricky in class. We discussed it a lot because you might be tempted to say that it's a medium of exchange. However, see that you're not buying anything yet. 
In this one, it says, you decide you're going to buy. You have not bought the hot dog yet. And you have not bought the salad either yet. It says later in the week, you can buy in here. One day you decide you're going to buy. You haven't bought anything yet. There's no exchange yet. So even though you might be tempted to say a medium of exchange, that is not the answer. The answer is a store of value because what you're doing is saving money so you can buy something that is more expensive later in the week. So as you have seen, three functions, very different from one another, but today we will focus on the first of these three functions, which is money as a medium of exchange. And we're going to explore how price and profit relate to this function right here. In order to understand that, we're going to imagine a situation with this sort of creepy person in the slides. So in most small businesses, such as Bale's grocery store, money is primarily used as a medium of exchange. Every time you go to a supermarket, to a store, you need to pay, right? They're not going to give you the items for free. That is money being used as a medium of exchange. So in order to make this work, the owners of the businesses, in this case, Bill, must set a price for each item he sets. If you go to a supermarket, it's really common to see the prices of the items that you're buying per kilogram usually. So eggs, tomatoes, cheese, lettuce, and everything else that you might think of has a price. Therefore, how can we define price? Price is the value placed on a product. For example, the price, the price sorry, of a new iPhone is $899. That is how much you pay for the product, you as a consumer of the product. Then we have profit. Profit is financial gain. And especially, it is the difference between the amount earned and the amount spent in buying, operating, or producing something. This might sound complicated, but you will see that it's not. For example, Apple sells their new iPhone in $899. They receive $899 for every iPhone that they sell. That they sell. However, it's not like they're going to keep the $899 because it costs $500 to produce that phone. They need to pay for the material, they need to pay for the workers, they need to pay for the advertising of the whole company, they need to pay taxes, they need to pay a lot of things. So it's not like that is free, that has a cost. And the cost of each iPhone is $500. So if you're going to calculate the profit, you just have to subtract the price of the product, what the company receives, minus, what it costs to produce. That is the difference between the amount earned and the amount spent, like our definition says. So 899 minus 500, that would give us a profit, a financial gain of $399 per phone. Now, Bale must be very careful to set the right price for his goods. Why? Because if the prices are too high, customers like Sam, I don't know if you have ever watched Lazy Town, but there was a person who was very stingy. He didn't want to spend any of his money. So customers like Sam will likely go to another store looking for better prices. And that happens, you know, if something is too expensive and you know that you can buy it at another store for less money, you will go to that other store. And the thing is that without customers, Bill won't make money or a profit. However, if the prices are too low, 
Bill might have more customers and sell lots of goods. You might have everything sold out and your store might be full, but he won't earn enough money to make a profit. Why? Because if the prices are too, too low, they're, they might be equal or very nearly equal to the costs. And imagine that it costs you $2 to produce a pencil that you're selling in four. If you sell it at $2.25, you're only getting 25 cents instead of $2 if you sold it at four. So see that the um, profit needs also to be good in order for the owner of the store to be able to have a profit pay his employees, etc. So setting prices, it's not something easy. Bill, like all businesses, must set his prices, and this is the balance, low enough to attract customers, but high enough to make a profit. This is why there is a balance on the right side because it is an equilibrium that must be found. If they're too high, people will not come. If they're too low, you won't make a profit. So there needs to be a balance between being low enough to attract customers and high enough to make a profit. And this can be a very difficult balancing act. In either case, if the prices are too high or too low, the store won't make a profit. They won't earn it money and the store will eventually have to close because they are not earning enough to pay for their for their expenses so when we have questions like this one when setting prices for a product what does the business have to consider and here there were plenty of mixed options however between the price must be equal to other products in the business the price must be high enough to make a profit the price must include round numbers and the price must be low enough so that the customers buy the product. The correct answers would be option number two and option number four. Because it's what we just mentioned. Maybe you think, oh, but number one works too. It doesn't mean that you need to be equal to other people in the same business because, well, we're going to see this next week, but if not, there wouldn't be any competition. Costs are different. Maybe what costs me, the pencil that costs me $2, costs you four. And then our selling prices are going to be different. And that is going to attract more or less customers. So it is not necessary for the price to be equal to other products in the business. And brown numbers, not at all, because if you, for example, have been to the United States, you know that a lot of prices are expressed in ways like $1.99, $2.99, $0.99, cents. So it's not round numbers at all. Then to close, See that the price of a product affects the buying and selling decisions of both consumers, sorry, that both consumers and producers make about it. Why? A generally, a lower price for any product attracts more customers. The cheaper it is, the more people would buy it generally. It's like when you're in the supermarket and you're trying to find the cheapest option. That's usually what we do if we're not considering quality. Of course, sometimes things that are more expensive are better done. Therefore, they are of a higher quality. And uh, if we consider quality, well, we might not get the cheapest option. But in general, thought a lower price attracts more customers. On the other hand, a higher price for the same product can mean fewer customers. Because if you can get it for cheaper, then you're not going to pay more if you can pay less, right? You want to make the best out of your money. So that is what happens with this situation. 
then important thing if a business is unable to sell a product they may lower their prices to attract more customers and that is why you see sales for example 50 percent off 25 percent get a discount on this buy two get one free that is usually what businesses do when they are unable to sell products however if you reduce your prices you also reduce your profit and in the in these cases to maintain a profit because your expenses are not changing the business may look at reducing other costs such as wages or energy or maybe what they invest in advertising etc so could you lower the price of your products and increase your profits yes but only if the business reduces other costs that is going to be our last question for the lesson and in here you have a summary of the last two lessons of this subject so the next steps copy the theory and the check your understanding questions identify with the blue star and that has been everything for today remember if you have any questions contact me via academia or next class and i will gladly reply take care bye bye see you soon